Imagine if you could make all the hard things in your life easier. Or better said, imagine if you could find a way to rewire your brain to love doing hard things. Would that make your life better? Would you become more successful if you found a way to love the hard things that you now hate to do? If the answer is yes, then I really want you to listen and even take your notepad out and listen up because I've got some really cool stuff I want to share with you on how I rewired my brain to crave and love doing hard things and even how to make success in and of itself easier as a byproduct of learning this skill. So this all stems from a book, actually, as a matter of fact, my favorite book called Chop Wood carry water by joshua medcalf look it up it's a great read it's only about two and a half hours in audible it's a phenomenal book i've read i think over four times at this point it's by far my favorite book of all time and to summarize the book chop wood carry water is a story of one boy's journey john to achieve his lifelong dream of becoming a samurai warrior guided by his sensei akira john comes to realize that the greatest adversity on his journey will be the challenge of defeating the man in the mirror this powerful story brings the train to be clutch curriculum to life in a powerful, memorable way. You learn a bunch of cool things, but more importantly, you learn how to love and enjoy the process of becoming great. How to surrender the outcome and focus on the now. How to enjoy every single thing of the day-to-day life, even the quote-unquote boring things, so that you inevitably end up at success and far beyond it because you're focused on the journey rather than the destination. That's what this book covers. Go read it. It's phenomenal. I actually, as a matter of fact, I subscribed it. I made everyone inside of my mastermind read that book, and we talked about it today on our weekly mastermind call. And we were all sharing our lessons, and after that call, I hopped on a call with Hermosi, as I do every single Monday. And at the beginning of the call, Hermosi started talking about the book, and I was shocked because I didn't tell Hermosi about this book, or at least not that I know of. And he was talking about John and, and Akira Sensei and the book and the principles of this book, and I'm sitting there like, Does he read my mind or do I read his? Like, how does this work? We digress. But he was sharing a lot of lessons from the book and it opened my eyes even more. And the stuff I'm about to share with you is the stuff that really rewired my brain to make loving the hard things easier. So that success becomes easier. Because if you can find a way to love the hard things that everybody else hates to do, you will become more successful. So... The first thing Hermosi talked about and the the first belief I want to share is that the reason that it takes so long achieving your goals is because you are in a rush. And when you are in a rush, the reason why it takes so long is because you switch so many times. You see, when you're in a rush to do anything, even driving, for example, as a matter of fact, I even remember (laughs) this one time when I was in a rush to get to work and I was driving, 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 there's a lot of traffic. So instead of taking the main road, I went on the back roads because I thought that that would get me there quicker. That was until I ran into construction and I sat in construction for 30 minutes waiting until I finally got let through. Needless to say, when I got to work, I was later than I would have been if I had just gone the normal way. And this, though short and seemingly worthless story can actually tell us a lot. And that is that when we are in a rush, we are constantly always looking for the best and the fastest way, which causes us to lose sight on now and also get rid of any rational, logical thoughts in our head to only focus on how can we get there quicker. And so here's what happens. It's, it's the equivalent of baking a turkey or cooking a turkey, whatever it's called, putting it in the oven for three minutes and after three minutes going, why is the turkey not done? Taking the turkey out and trying to put it in the toaster and seeing if you can get it done quicker. You and I both know that doesn't work. And here's the thing. If you ever cooked a turkey before, if you saw somebody do that, you would laugh at them and go, dude, what are you doing? Why are you taking the turkey out? Here's the problem. is If the guy's never cooked a turkey before, he doesn't know what to expect. And so he just wants it to go quick because he wants his turkey. Here's the thing. is Anyone that's gone through it knows that's not how it works. So here's the point. is When you're in a rush, the reason why it takes longer is because you're always looking for the fastest thing. And so if you don't get what you want right away, you constantly want to switch. Here's the problem, is whether you use the toaster, the microwave, or the oven, they're all going to take long to bake the turkey, to cook the turkey. Not to mention that the best turkey is the one that you marinate overnight and then do this and that, yada, 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 right? But the point is that if you keep switching from microwave to oven to toaster to this to slow cooker to whatever, you're never actually going to cook the turkey because you keep switching and switching and switching. And it's the same with your goals. It's the same with trying to get good at the sports. Imagine if you want to become the best basketball player. And after a week, you're like, why am I not in the NBA? What the fuck? And they're like, fine, let me go try golf. Let me see if I'm better than Tiger Woods. And after a week, you're like, why am I not in the pro tour? What the hell? You're like, fine, I'll become a cyclist. After a week, you're like, why am I not in the Tour de France? And you switch and switch and switch and switch and switch. 
And that's what being in a rush does is you don't ever get to where you want to go because you keep switching because you expect things to happen quicker than you want them to. You see, most people don't actually set unrealistic goals. They just set unrealistic timelines with those goals. You see, your goal to make $10,000 a month may be very feasible. However, if you tell yourself that you're going to go from an absolute nobody with no skills, with no idea what to do, with never having started a business before and say, I'm going to make $10,000 in the next 30 days, there's a chance you do that. And people have done that. But there's an overwhelmingly bigger chance that you don't do that. And so then you get upset after 30 days and go, wow, this business model sucks. Drop shipping must not be for me. This is what I did. <laughs> I started drop shipping with the intent of making hundreds of thousand dollars, if not millions in my first year. After the first 30 days, I hadn't made a penny. Guess what I did? I was pissed at all those YouTubers who made videos talking about how easy it was to make money online. And I said, fuck these guys. Drop shipping sucks. And I quit. Here's the problem with that. Is drop shipping doesn't suck. You can tell people have made millions of dollars and it's true. So did drop shipping suck or did I just suck? Did drop shipping not work or did I just not make drop shipping work? You see, if right now somebody goes out there and drives a red Ferrari into a building, does that mean that all red Ferraris drive into buildings? Well, no, that just means that that person driving that red Ferrari drove into the building. So that doesn't mean we should generalize and say, hey, all red Ferraris are bad. That just means that that person driving that red Ferrari was bad. The point I'm trying to make, I hope you get it at this point. I hope it's clear. If not, we've got a couple more examples to go through, right? But the point I'm trying to make is that when you try and go somewhere quicker, you end up taking longer to get there because you're constantly in a rush and you switch things up all the time. Which leads me to the next point, which is that when you're constantly focused on your goals, let me make 10K a month, let me make a million dollars, let me buy this McLaren. What happens is if you have one eye on the future, that means you can only have one eye on the present. And with one eye on the present, you can't fully dedicate every ounce of your being and every single molecule of energy that you have inside of your body on the present moment, on today. You see, imagine if you're walking a tightrope and half of your vision is looking at you know, the goal, which is walking across the, the canyon, and half of it is looking at your next step, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to fall because you're not dedicating every single part of your being to focusing on the now. And that's the same in business or in life. When you put half your vision on the future and half on the present, you end up falling and failing. And in more severe cases, dying. Right? Your business going under. And that is why it's so crucial to stop focusing so much on the outcome. On where you want to go. It's good to have goals. It's phenomenal. Right? But you can't let, you, you can't let you, that goal take your eye off the ball. Take your eye off the prize. Right? Which is today. We can't control what happened yesterday. We can't control what happens tomorrow. We can only control today. What's happening right now. As a matter of fact, the best way to prepare for the future is to focus every single ounce of your being on today. Because that's what you can control. You can't control tomorrow. So the best, the best way to prepare for it is to focus on today. You see, life isn't found in the past or the future. It's only found right now, right here in this very moment between you and I. That's where life is found. And if you have one eye always on the future, you never fully live. You live a life you never truly lived, which would suck. Okay. And so then this begs the question of like, well, okay, let's say that this turkey takes three hours to cook and I'm impatient. How do I know when to take the turkey out of the oven and put it into a new oven or a new slow cooker? Right? Or rather said, how do I know if the oven is even on? How do I know when to switch it up is essentially the question. Right? Here's the question. If you're asking yourself, why hasn't it happened yet? Why hasn't the turkey cooked? Why haven't I got to my goal? Okay. Then you know you're doing something wrong. So I'll give you an example. The question should be, how can I get better? Not why hasn't it happened yet? If you're asking why hasn't it happened yet means you're only focusing on the outcome. And it means you're not taking any of the responsibility. You're only trying to just blame on the outcome. Why am I not there? This thing sucks. Screw this thing. But if you're asking, how can I get better? How could I cook this turkey faster? Could I have prepared it better? Could I have preheated the oven? Could I have bought a better oven? Those are questions that will allow you to actually bake the turkey faster. But if you're just sitting here like, why hasn't the turkey happened? Why haven't I made $10,000 a month? You will never make it quicker. So the question is, when you are, I guess, upset... Are you input focused or output focused? Are you focused on why have I not made, made $10,000? Or are you asking yourself, why have I not gotten better at sales from last week when I started learning how to sell? Depending on the answer, which question you ask yourself will show you why you're not where you are. Are you input or output focused? Are you you focused or other people focused? Okay. And so the last thing I want to share 
is this idea that entrepreneurs, <coughs> forgive me, excuse me, entrepreneurship is just you walking up a humongous mountain in the middle of a bunch of fog. That's entrepreneurship in a nutshell, is you walking up a really steep mountain with lots of cliffs and bridges and navigational things you have to you know, circumvent around in the middle of the fog. You see, you never really know where you're going. But you just know the only way to get to the top of the mountain is just to keep walking and taking one foot after another and one foot after another. Here's the problem. is If you try and focus on the top of the mountain that you can't even see yet because there's a bunch of fog, you're going to fall and die. You're going to take the wrong step. You're going to you know, walk the wrong way. And you're not going to get to where you, where you need to go. What you need to do is just focus on the now and have undeniable belief that you're going to get to the top eventually. That's all you have to focus on because that's all that you can control. Is the undeniable belief that you will not give up when you keep taking step after step after step after step after step. And that is entrepreneurship. Even Hermosi said today on the call I was on with him. He said that there is days where he still, quote, I don't want to say doubts himself, but second guesses what he's doing. And has this, this fear and this doubt. And that's normal. Because that's entrepreneurship. Is the future isn't written in stone. That's why entrepreneurship is a blessing and a curse. Is because you don't know what's going to happen. And that's beautiful. It could be something extremely cool and it could be something extremely bad. But that's what makes entrepreneurship so cool in and of itself. Is that. So, that's how I rewired my brain to crave and love doing the hard things. And I recommend that if this has had any impact on you at all, go read the book Chop Wood, Carry Water. Go read that book. It will change your life forever. And after it does, shoot me a message on Discord. The link is down below. Tell me it changed your life and let me know your biggest takeaway. I love to chat about it. I love that book. And I think it'll do many of you good. That's all I got for today, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good one. Peace.